The search is being conducted by Davis County and Salt Lake County search and rescue dive teams and a special Air Force disaster team. In the water is an MH-60G Pavehawk, the U.S. Air Force's latest special operations and rescue helicopter. The aircraft is attached to the first special operations wing at MacDill Air Force Base in Florida and was on a routine training mission at the time it went into the water. Routine ranger type training such as patrolling, raids, ambushes and live fire exercises. These are all special operations types of activities. Throughout the night, rescue teams worked to locate the aircraft, but after reportedly finding one survivor, weather conditions deteriorated, and at 4 a.m., the search was suspended. We were out there for two and a half hours. Visibility was bad. Extremely bad. We, we could see the end of our, to the end of the light beam, and that was it. This is all that remains of the multi-million dollar Pavehawk helicopter. The chopper, attached to the 1st Special Operations Wing at Hurlbert Air Force Base in Florida, was returning from a night training mission in Utah's West Desert when it went down. Routine ranger type training such as patrolling, raids, ambushes and live fire exercises. Throughout the night, rescuers battle the bitter winds and pouring rain, seeking survivors from the three-person crew and nine passengers. One person was found alive and was taken to the University of Utah Medical Center. But at 4 a.m., conditions grew so bad, the searchers had to stop. That's why we had to bring our divers in, because it was getting cold. With daylight and a slight break in the weather, the search resumed. Helicopters scanned the shores of the Great Salt Lake, and one by one, 12 bodies were found loaded into waiting ambulances and taken from the crash site. As the search progressed, the squadron's remaining pavehawks flew overhead, returning from today's mission. The unanswered question is, what went wrong? The Air Force Investigation Board has been appointed. It's going to be a couple of weeks before all the debris can be pulled out of the Great Salt Lake, but in the meantime, an investigation into the cause is already underway. Results aren't expected for several months. Rod Jackson, KTVX 4 News, Syracuse.